This is part three on how to solve the Rubik's Revenge. At this point, you should have your green center and corner solved, your blue center and corner solved, and right now you're learning the edges, all right? I've taught you a basic method. Okay. Uh, the method, basically, take your piece, have green on the front face facing to the side. This is the side it has to go to on the opposite side. Twist the face down, twist the piece over, twist it back up. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the last part, but um, when you're going to build each of these edges, you must choose, you must select one edge that you are not gonna solve, like this. Let's say I'm not gonna solve the white side. You're gonna learn why later, but so I'm gonna say I'm not solve the white side. So this green white piece right here, uh, I won't put it up until later. All right. So let me show you another example. All right, I've got a green yellow piece, right? Turn it so it's opposite the yellow side. Twist it down. Twist the piece in. Twist it back up. And there you go. Now it's done. Alright. Now here come some special positions. One is, you have a piece um, up in one of the sides, like so. Doesn't necessarily have to be twisted this way or not. But you're going to have a piece um, up in this layer in the wrong spot. Alright? It's very simple what you do. All you do is you take the side it's on, twist it down, all right? Take, see this piece right here, it has to come out because this piece has to go right here. It has to go into that edge. So I have to get it out of this edge. So what I have to do is I have to twist the side down, take the piece, twist it out of the slice, or twist it to the side right here, and twist that slice back up. And there you go. Now it's replaced by a new piece. And this piece right here, has come out. And then simply just put use your normal method, twist the slice down, or twist the side down, twist the piece in, twist the side back up. Um I just wanna get in a good position. Hmm. Well, and this could take some time. Alright, sometimes you may run into a position like this. Where on the bottom slice, where the blue is, you have a green edge piece that you need to get up. Alright, this piece has to go up here. Alright, sometimes you'll end up in a position like that. As you know, um, if like I, uh, if I twist it, kind of like this in order to get it out, I can disturb some of the pieces, like if I wanted to get this piece out, if I go to twist it, I have dislodged this piece, alright, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically, you have to be careful when you have to remove it, only when it's on the bottom layer though. So what you do, you put it under the side that you chose not to solve, like I chose white, right here, you can twist it, twist it down, now the piece can be dislodged, alright, like now there's really no piece that's lodged in a place that you need, so you just twist it twice, Twist the slice twice and twist it back up. Then you got the piece up like that and you would normally put it up. But I have one last example that I want to get. Alright, here it is. Now sometimes you have it on the bottom, but the, this time the green is not facing the blue side, alright? Basically, it's your, it's your same position, except your green is not facing the bottom, alright? It's flipped. Alright, this one is actually easier to do. Instead of uh, twisting it to the face that you're not solving and dislodging it, well, you, you can actually do something easier. So I twist uh, the correct side above it, alright? And as you can see, it's going to go directly up into that slice. So if you or into the face. So if you twist the face down, there's the piece. You can twist it into place and twist it back up. I just want to fix one thing. All right. So now what you should have is your green face almost done. One edge is left empty. So you may have a piece solved in there. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just ignore it. Okay. Next, what you're gonna do is you can turn the cube over, and now you're working on the blue face. Once again, you're gonna have
to solve the edges on the blue face. Except you will be solving all of the edges. You will not skip uh, one edge down here. Alright. So, this, uh, these edges have a rule they have to follow. But first, you're going to do the setup moves like normally. Alright? This uh, blue-red piece, opposite of the red face, or the red side on the blue face, it's opposite. Now, normally, what you would do, you would twist it down, twist the piece in, and up. But now, if you look at the green side, I just dislodged a new piece. You don't want to do that. So you have to follow a special... Thing. Hold on, i got to fix this. Alright, you have to do something special. Alright? So, so far, the setup's okay. This piece goes up here. Alright? Except I'm going to dislodge uh, this piece right here if I do the normal method. So what you have to do is twist the bottom so it aligns with the face you're trying to solve, basically. So this is the red side of the blue face, and we're trying to get a red, uh, blue-red piece into the blue-red edge. All right. So directly under the blue-red edge, you're going to put the green-white, or whatever edge you have not solved on the green face. You're going to put it directly under. This way, when you twist the side down, put your piece in and up, the only pieces you've affected on the bottom are one of these two pieces, and you haven't even attempted to solve it yet, so it's not a problem. Alright, I'm going to go through that again. You're going to do your setup as normally. Set it up so they're opposite. Make sure that the bottom face, the unsolved edge, is directly under the edge you are trying to get uh, to solve. Alright? This piece is opposite this edge. We're trying to solve this edge, so directly under it, you put your unsolved green edge. Alright, twist the face down, over, and up. Alright? You have to follow this rule every time. Let's say I wanted to put uh, this piece up in, up here. Alright? It's another blue-red piece. Let's say I want to put it up there. I can't just do that because I have to make sure this edge is aligned like so. That way, the edge can go into place without disturbing the green side. This is why the whole time you never solved one of the edges because this is used as uh, what's called a keyhole where everything has to pass through. Alright, so now I've got these two pieces in place, and I have not disturbed any of the green I put in. Alright, uh, here is a blue-yellow. It's opposite the blue-yellow. You twist the bottom, so the keyhole is directly under the edge you're trying to solve. Down, over, up. You're going to keep doing this with all your pieces. Like here, I have a blue-orange. It's opposite the orange side. Keyhole is directly under it. But down, over, and up. Um, I'm going to keep doing this until I run into one of the special positions. These positions, like the special, like the positions where they were like on the bottom layer stuff, they are more annoying than the other one. make one of these positions. Well, first off, the special position where you have your piece down the bottom layer, except blue is not facing green. Simple, just put it directly above, twist the side over and up. That has not changed. Now, I know this is hard to explain if you're confused. I'm sorry, there's really not much I can do. This is really hard to get a position like this. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm about to run out of time. I will finish up the edges in the next part. I will show you the special positions that you have. Sorry that I spent a lot of this time just trying to get in certain positions, but I will uh, finish it up next time. I'll finish up edges. This is the Rubik's Revenge tutorial part three. Thanks for watching.